This is the grade 8 math practice test for T and Ready. Question currently number 16. What is the volume in cubic inches of a sphere with an 18-inch diameter? So let's think about a sphere first, and I'm going to do some really lousy two-dimensional drawing to make it seem like I'm doing three dimensions. So the key factor of a sphere is that it is uh, based around a circle. So every time I use... I perform a volume analysis, I always think of using the same formula, which is built around volume equals what I call big baby base times height. Now, big baby base is really area of the base. So whatever the base shape is, that's what I'm trying to find. This is a circle. So if for this big baby base, what I'm really going to do is say area of a circle. And I'll get back to that in just a minute. The height is a little more complicated. Usually it's from the top to the bottom, and they'll give you some analysis. In a sphere, they give it to you because it's the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here. So what you're looking at is the diameter. So the height of the figure they've already given you, it's 18 inches. So 18. That's the height of the figure. Now, there is a caveat to this. Because this formula is based off the idea of having this inside of a, and I don't know why I'm dropping that back, but I'll fix it in a second. Say this thing is sitting in a oof, very badly drawn cylinder. So... Generally speaking, if I have a shape like this, if it were a cone, for instance, like this, I would do my analysis based off the idea that it's this. And since there's one pointy end, I do one third. That would be a cone. That would be a cone like this. I'm not doing a cone. I'm doing a sphere. This essentially has two pointy ends, right? One pointy end, and it would help if my pen wasn't the same color as that. So I'm going to fix that. One pointy-ish end two pointy-ish ends. So instead of doing one-third, I'm going to do two-thirds. So if you have a loss of thought about let's do volume, if you could remember big baby base times H, and remember that big baby base is area of the base, and H is height, you're halfway there. If it has no pointy ends like the cylinder does, you're good to go. You didn't need to do anything else. If you have pointy ends like the cone, you have to count how many pointy ends you have. And by pointy, relatively speaking, cones have a severe pointy end, one out of three. Um, and the reason it's thirds is because if you pour stuff in, it'll actually, three cones will fill in the cylinder with the same base size. Um, for a sphere, it's two pointy ends. So two-thirds. So if you can remember that if it's pointy ends, you put a three down here, number of pointy ends on top, you're good to go. So let's do some math now, right? And by that, I mean calculations, because this is already math. I'm just kind of messing around. All right. So equals two-thirds. Area of base, area of a circle is pi r squared. So pi, the radius, they give me diameter here. That only gets, that gets me all the way across. I only want to here. So I have to take 18 divided by 2. So the radius is equal to the diameter divided by 2. The radius in this case is 9. So 9 squared. And then times the height, which I already said was 18. So now I'm just ready to do some math with the worst calculator ever. The nice thing about this um, particular question is it doesn't give you any sort of um, down here, it doesn't actually say how you have to do it. It doesn't say, put it in terms of pi. It just says, give me an answer. I don't care. So you can do whichever you want. You can put it, quote unquote, in terms of pi, which means my answer down here would have pi in it. Let me go back to purple there. And then I would just multiply this times this times this. Or I can just group it all together. So let's try the first one, and then we'll move on from there. So in this case, I'm going to do... 9 times 9, because that's what 9 squared means. Don't do 9 times 2. It, the base is 9, so 9 times 9, times 18. Times, how do you do 2 thirds in a lousy calculator like this? It's easy. Multiply by the numerator, and then divide by the denominator. And you end up with 900 
and 72. Pi. And that's my answer. Or maybe I want to I, I want to type pi in there as well. So all I do there is I'd start over and I would do let's just say it's 3.14. That's close enough for pi in this case. Times 9 and I'm going to multiply it by 9 again. Then times 18. Multiply that times 2. Divide by 3 and it gives me this. Now, mathematically speaking, order of operations would say, since these are together, I would do the 9 squared first, get 81 times pi, and then multiply by 18, and then, um, only because I put them in parentheses, I could have changed that around, uh, do the 2 thirds first times this times this, but since it's all multiply, they're all on the same level anyway, except for this, and I converted it into a multiply as well, so the order of operations didn't really destroy me here, that didn't go in order. So this answer... 3052.1 roundabout is okay as well. They don't tell you. They'll actually take anything in this range uh, up to 3,055, so you don't have to be precise. If they don't say put it in a certain form, you don't have to put it in a certain form. It gives you a little bit of breathing room. So, and that's really all you have to do. I mean, the wrap up here is that if you have a volume question, and if you can go back to remembering the single formula, volume equals area of the base times height, you're in good shape. Then all you have to do is say, is there a pointy end? If the answer is yes, there's a pointy-ish end. There's only one of them though, because it's, you know, a pyramid like that, then that's one pointy end, and it breaks it into thirds. If you have the pointy-ish end created by this sphere, it's two-thirds. And that's it.